Hi, everybody. Welcome back. We are here for week six of our six-week online video series in partnership with the Parkinson Society of BC. So very excited to be here for our last workout today. We've got some fun and different challenges for you today, including some footwork and cognitive challenges, some handwork, just to give you a taste of some different kind of types of exercises that you can use to challenge you at home. Um, again, we're going to give you all the exercises in seated and in standing today to give you uh, options as to what level you'd like to work at. We're going to do our warm-up, our regular warm-up, with a little bit of some quick moving fast feet and arms in there as well today to get our heart rates up. And then we're going to get right to it. All right, so let's start with our arm swings. Again, in standing or in seated, you're going to start with big arm swings forward, little bend in the knee. If you're doing this in seated, you can take a seat and go nice and wide. We're just going to warm up those arms, okay? Um, as we do this, just notes for today, you're going to need a band. So if you have a band, you're going to want to get that ready. You can pause the video and go and grab it. You're going to want your water as usual. You should need it. A chair, remember if you're using a chair, you want it sturdy, pushed against a wall so it's not going to tip, especially with some of the leaning back work that we're doing today, okay? Big backwards arm circles, big stretches, warming up those shoulders getting things moving. And I think that's all you need today. Water, your band, and your chair. That's it. Five, four, three, two, one. We're gonna go to our opposite knee to elbow touches. You can do this in standing, or you can do it in seated. Okay, big trunk rotation. So we're trying to warm up through that trunk. Try and get the elbow all the way across the knee. Try not to bring the knee across center. Big twist. That's it. 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We're going to do our mini squats. So a little bend, a little up, okay? Just warming up those legs. If you're in seated, you're going to just do a little lift off the chair. Remember what we talked about last week with our knees going forward over our toes to help us out of the chair, using some of that momentum if you need it. All right. And again, if in your standing, just doing your little squats. Very nice. Warming up the body before we get started. Let's do 10 more. Nine, eight, sticking your bum back behind you. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Good. We're going to kick our heels back. So if you have a chair that has space underneath it, you want to get your heel back behind the chair. Okay, if you're in standing, hands to the back pockets, kicking your heels up. You want to try not to let your knee come in front. Heels go all the way back. Okay, big kicks. We're warming up our quads here, stretching them out. Warming up our hamstrings, stretching out our quads, getting our hip flexors long, tall posture, opening up that chest. You can do a lot just with a warm up. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one. Good work. We're going to stretch out our hamstrings a little bit. So remember sitting your bum back, reaching down towards the floor, getting a big stretch through your hamstring. You're also doing a great job here of practicing shifting your weight into your back foot and getting your toes up in the front. All very important skills for walking and balancing. Big shift. Okay, if you're in seated, you're going to scoot to the front of your chair. Big stretch as we reach down towards the floor. You might feel pretty tight in those hamstrings as you get started, that's normal. As your body warms up and some of that rigidity eases off a little bit, you might find that you can actually do this a lot more smoothly. But at the beginning, it's okay to feel a little bit stiff and tight. We expect that by the end of the workout, you'll be warm and sweating and hopefully feel a lot looser. A few more here, big stretch through that hamstring. Good. Three, two, and one. We're going to do our flicks. You're going to need these today. So we're going to take our hands to our shoulders. We're going to lean forward and do a nice big flick. If you're doing it in standing, little bend of the knees, flick the arms forward. Okay, we're going to do 10 big flicks. You want your hand fully open at the front. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10. Very nice. We're going to add in a little bit of shoulder rolls today. So up and back with those shoulders. We're just going to do some nice big shoulder rolls. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and one. Very nice job. We're going to get our heart rate up a little bit with a quick set of fast feet. Remember, in seated, it looks like this. In standing, it looks like this. We did this last week. You should hear that nice wobble in your voice if you're doing it correctly, that uh, to tell you you're doing it right. Okay, here we go. Fast feet. Get them moving as quick as you can like a football player. Shifting that weight side to side if you're in standing. If you're in seated, getting that foot way off the ground as fast as you can. Come on, let's do about 10 more seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Well done, okay? Remember, you can use these warm-up exercises anytime you're going to do a workout. Nice, quick, short warm-up just to get things moving. So, for our exercises today, we've got six exercises and we're gonna give you a little bonus on the last round. We're going to do them for a minute each and we're going to go through them twice. You can always go through them more if you want. That's no problem. Okay, but I'm going to take you through them twice. The first time with a little more explanation. The second time we'll move a little quicker. So we're going to start off with our band. Okay, we're all going to do this in seated to start. What you're going to do is you're going to get your band under your foot. Now, it's important when you're using a band <laughs> and putting it under your foot that it's nice and stable under your foot. You don't want it right by your toes or right by your heel. Or you can imagine what's going to happen. It's going to come up and snap and knock you in the face, okay? Make sure it's right under your foot. Give it a big push down. You're going to take the handles of your band, and you're going to get your hands behind them so that you can point your wrists forward, okay? You can shorten one hand and make the other hand longer to make it easier, or you can pull one hand tighter and make the other hand shorter to make it harder. What we're going to be doing is overhead presses, so it looks like this. Okay, you're going to bias your band to start. You're going to push the band up to the sky and bring it back down. Now, what I want you to try and avoid is leaning backwards. Okay, so I don't want you to lean back to push that band up to the sky. If it's too hard, you either get a lighter band or you just bias it a little more to make it a little easier. But I want you to really use your core to sit up tall. Okay, so we're going to get that band in your hand ready to go. Flip that wrist facing forward. If you find it easier to hold it this way with your hand behind the band, you can do that as well, okay? We're gonna put one minute on the clock and we're gonna do our presses. We're gonna go five with one hand, five with the other. If you have a really short band, you can either scoot it under your bottom or you can go into kneeling and put it under your knees, all right? Shoulder presses, here we go, ready, set, and go. Big press up and down. So you can either do it with your hand wrapped around like this to add a little more tension or just palm forward behind the band, either way. Press up and down using your core, nice and strong. Pure shoulder work here. Okay, core is working to keep you steady. Four and five. Now I'm gonna switch my hands. I'm gonna go to the other hand. One, two, three, four, and five. Again, biasing your band so that it's still challenging, okay? but you can do it without leaning back. Try to keep your shoulders away from your ears so we're avoiding this. Okay, nice long space between your shoulders and your ears. Two, you should feel those shoulders working right away. Three, four, and five, and other side. Lock that band down on the other side. Let's finish off that side so we get 10 reps total each side. Three, four, five, good work, okay. so. You should feel that warming up your core. Again, we're going to go through two rounds of this, and you can do more at home. So if you need a reminder, you'll get that soon. We're going to do our dead bugs now. So we're going to do this seated or lying down. I'm going to demo in seated first. If you've been doing your exercises in standing or you're comfortable getting up, up and down off the floor, then I'm going to get you to come to lying down on your back right now so that when I go to demo there, you're already there. Okay? This is a core exercise. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna sit at the edge of the, your chair. You're gonna come nice and tall with your trunk. You're gonna pull your belly button into your spine and you're gonna lean back just a tad, okay? Your back's not touching the backrest. You're using your tummy muscles to hold you up. I'm gonna take my right hand to my right knee and I'm gonna push to hold that leg nice and stable. Then I'm gonna take my left hand to my left knee and I'm gonna meet them in the middle 
okay, midway through their range of motion. Then I'm going to reach out nice and long, stretch them out, and come back and meet in the middle. You should feel your core working nice and strong to hold you there. If you feel pain in your back, I want you to pull that belly button, suck it in towards your spine. Okay, that's going to help to protect your spine from doing the work. Here we go. We're going to go five reps on one side, five on the other, okay? The lying down version quickly before we start looks exactly the same, but in lying down, you're going to tuck your bum under, back stays to the floor, one hand pushes against the knee, five reaches on one side, five on the other. The key here is that my back stays perfectly still. I'm not arching and rolling as my leg moves, okay? My back stays perfectly still and stable. So I'm going to do the first part for you in seated, and then I'll show you in lying down again. One minute on the clock. Find your spot. Ready, set. Off we go. Little lean back. Five on one side. Four and five. Five on the other. Pull that belly button into the spine. Just a little lean back. It doesn't take much. Two, three, four and five so keep going and seated if that's where you're doing it i'm going to demo for you one more time in lying if you're doing it in lying okay whatever level you're at keep going tuck your belly button to the ground pull your knees up hand into one knee nice and strong other side moves one two three four five counting on your own okay you don't want your back to move at all if you start to arch okay then you've gone too far then do it smaller you want to work within your range where your core is still active, okay? The second we let go of our back, we've lost all our core engagement. So pull that spine in, okay? Finish up the set of five that you're on, okay? Make sure you even out your sides. And we're going to go on to the next exercise. So even out those sides, make sure you've got both sides through. And then we'll go on to the next one. So the next exercise, we're going to start working our cognition a little bit. This one we're going to do with our feet. It's a pattern, and what we want to do is try and move our feet big, and we want to try and move them quickly in a pattern um, that I'm going to give you right now. So it looks like this. You're going to start with your feet shoulder width apart. You're going to go in, out, one foot forward, one foot back, switch them to the other side. You're going to cross one foot behind and open, other foot behind and open. I know it sounds complicated. Once you repeat it a few times, you'll get used to it real quick. So let's go again. In, out, forward, back, forward, back, cross, uncross, cross, uncross. It helps if you say it out loud, okay? And standing, it's the same thing. In, out, forward, back, forward, back, cross, uncross, cross, uncross. Whichever version you want to do is just fine. Try and follow along with me, whether you're in standing or seated. We're going to do it for a minute, okay? If you mess up, don't worry. Pause, start again with me the next round. It's no problem. It doesn't have to be perfect. Here we go. Ready, set, go. Let's go. In, out, forward, back, forward, back, cross, uncross, cross, uncross. Again, in, out, forward, back, forward, back, cross, uncross, cross, Uncross, again, in, out, forward, back, forward, back, cross, uncross, cross, uncross. We're going to speed it up now. Here we go. In, out, forward, back, forward, back, cross, uncross, cross, uncross. Find your pace that works for you, okay? That's it. Keep going, guys. Whatever pace works for you, try and find that pattern. Try and keep repeating that pattern. If you're doing it in standing, same thing, okay? Keep it up. Almost there, okay? It's a great heart rate booster, and it's a great way to work on that cognition, okay? Almost, keep it up. There's your time. Well done, okay? Very good work. I know it takes a little bit of time to get used to that, but it is a very good way to challenge your brain, and we need to challenge your brain to change your body. So the next exercise we're doing is a uh, lateral reaching exercise. Okay, so we're going to be doing weight shifting side to side, either from seated or in standing. So it looks like this. We're going to come from a squat position. You're going to come up. You're going to reach sideways. Arm goes to the sky. Come back down onto your seat. Reach the other way. 
Okay, if you're doing it in standing, it looks like this. Squat and reach, squat and reach. Now, you can add in a hop if you want, which looks like this. You, if you're seated, you go up and you hop on that leg, down, up, and hop. Or if you're standing, squat and hop, squat and hop. The important part is that we're trying to shift our weight all the way onto one leg. Okay, here we go. Ready, set, give it a go. Off we go. So up and reach, back down. Okay, nice big bum back squat. Shifting your weight all the way over to one leg, getting tall on that leg. Adding in that hop if you want to. That's it. Okay, in standing, keep going. Do whatever version works for you. But nice big weight shift. We're trying to teach your body to shift your weight all the way to one side. Can't hop? Don't hop. Okay, if you can, go for it. <laughs> keep going. Working through whatever versions work for you. You should feel those legs working real hard right about now. That's it. Come on, guys. Heart rate should be up. We should be starting to sweat a little bit here. Up and reach. You're almost there. You got 10 seconds to go. You can do anything for 10 seconds, right? You've already done the hardest part of the work. Come on. And rest. Well done. So the next exercise we're going to do is a reciprocal leaning exercise. So reciprocal patterning is very important in Parkinson's. Reciprocal means opposite arm to leg, and that's how we walk. So when you're standing up and walking, it looks like this. That often gets lost in Parkinson's. So doing exercises that are reciprocal in nature are very important to help gain that normal gait back, okay? So this one looks like this. We're gonna work on our hand function and our reciprocal patterning. I'm gonna zoom in to my hand here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna teach you this part first. So. Your hand's gonna be out in front. We're gonna be doing a coordination pattern here. You're gonna take your thumb to each finger and open it up each time. Now, I don't want this, okay? We wanna to touch and open, big open every time, okay? We're gonna go all the way one direction, all the way the other. Then we're gonna do flicks. They're gonna be mini flicks. So we're gonna bend a little bit, open up our hand and flick it wide. You want to be able to shoot arrows or lasers in between each of your fingers. That's how wide they should be, okay? So we're going to go one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, four mini flicks, okay? And then we're going to do the other side. Now, like I said, to make it just a little more complex, we're going to do it in a reciprocal pattern. So what we're going to do is we're going to lean forward, opposite arm to leg, and that's where we're going to do that pattern, okay? Then we're going to switch, lean forward, opposite leg, do that pattern. In standing, looks like this. Do the pattern, switch, like this, okay? You'll see what I mean as we get going. It's not as complicated as it sounds. Follow my lead on the clock. Ready, set, and go. So lean forward. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Flicks. One, two, three, four. Big switch of your feet. Other side, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, flicks, two, three, four. Big switch of your feet. Same thing if you're in standing. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, flicks, four, three, two, one. Big wide hand, switch it up, keep going. One, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, one, two, three, Four, count out nice and loud. Me, I'll show you in standing. One, two, three, four. Four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four. High amplitude, big switch. One, two, three, four. Four, three, two, one. One, two, three, four. Well done, guys. Okay, so a little bit of cognitive challenge in there and very good for your coordination and hand function. Okay? Very good to do those exercises if you're trying to do a dexterous task like buttons or opening a jar or things like that. Great exercise to do beforehand to get those motor patterns firing a little better. Now, we're going to go on to our last exercise, then we'll go through them all once more. This is, again, a cognitive challenge combined with a really strong physical challenge as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to do sit-to-stand hops, and we're going to use our brain as we do it. We're dual tasking here. 
This is super duper important for everyday tasks. It's very rare that we walk and do nothing else, right? Or try and turn for no reason. Usually we're trying to do other things. We're walking and talking, we're turning our heads, we're carrying something, we're moving something, something from point A to point B. So this is a great way to, to practice that and it can help with re um, reducing that freezing as well, the freezing of gait. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go sit to stand and we're gonna hop, okay? If you're in standing, you're gonna go squat and hop. Now, every time you hop, you're gonna name an animal starting from the alphabet from A to Z. So, for example, looks like this. I'm going to go alligator, bear, cat, dog. Okay, can't use those ones now. <laughs> so, I'm going to try and zip my mouth on this because it's going to be very confusing for you if I'm yelling out animals to you. I'm going to try and be silent for a full minute for you. Well, you do this, okay? A to Z, the goal is to try and keep moving as fast as you can so your brain has to think and move very quickly, okay? Here we go. One minute on the clock. Ready, set, go. Using your animals, A to Z. Standing. Can't hop, just reach. Keep it up, guys. You got 20 seconds left. Well done, and rest. Very hard for me to stay quiet. <laughs> so, good job, hopefully that worked for you. I know it probably made your sit to stand a little more challenging or your hopping a little more challenging, which is totally normal. So, back to the beginning we go. Grab a drink of water, rest for a second. We're gonna go back to the first exercise, go through them all again. Alrighty, so hopefully everyone had a drink of water, a little breather. We are going back to the beginning of our exercises and doing them all over again. Again, with a little bit of less of an explanation this time, uh, because you should know a little bit more what we're doing. We're gonna grab our bands and we're gonna go directly to number one, which is our shoulder presses with our band locked under our foot. Okay, here we go, ready. One minute on the clock, five each side, set, and go. Nice big press, adjust your band to where you want it. No leaning back, right? That's it. Tuck that tummy in, use that core to keep you stable five on one side, then we swap it over, five on the other. You can switch which foot it's under if you want. It doesn't matter all that much. Okay, that's it. If it's too easy, just pull the band a little tighter. You control how hard it is. Let's try and get at least 10 reps total each side. That's it, guys. Shoulders are working hard. Well done. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're here working out. That's what matters. Good job. Well done. A few more in if you can. Three, four, finish up whichever side you're on. Good work. We're going to drop our band and we're going to go on to number two, which is our seated or lying down dead bug. So if you need to get into a lying down position, you can do that now. Otherwise, you can stay in seated, opposite hand to opposite leg, a slight lean back, but most importantly, no matter which position you're in, belly button pulls into the spine, suck in that belly button, contract that core to keep you stable. Here we go, ready, set, go. Five each side. That's it. And other side, nice and controlled, pulling in that core. Well done, guys. You should feel it working. Remember, if you don't feel it working, it's probably not working. <laughs> okay, make sure you feel the exercises when you do them. That's it. 
If you're lying on your back, I want that back nice and tucked to the floor. Nice stable spine. It doesn't move as all at all as you reach your legs. Only go as far as you can, keeping that spine stable. If this is as far as we go today, then that's fine. If you can reach all the way out, then go for that. Work with whatever level works for you today. Okay, tuck that bum under. Keep going, guys. That's it. Well done. Finish off whichever side you're on. Don't leave it in the middle. That's it. All right, going through them on number three. Now we're gonna go into our feet exercise. I'm gonna remind you one more time of this pattern. In, out, forward, back, forward, back. Cross, uncross, cross, uncross. Slow it down if you need to. Once you've got the pattern, pick up that speed to make it harder. Okay, in standing, you're doing the hopping version of exactly the same thing. Okay, here we go. Ready, set, and go. In, out, forward, back, forward, back, cross, uncross, cross, uncross. Okay, in standing, in, out, forward, back, forward, back, cross, uncross, cross, uncross. Whichever version works for you, keep going. Okay. Good work. That's it, guys. Find that rhythm. Okay, if you need to slow it down, slow it down. If you can speed it up, speed it up. Find that nice rhythmical pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, keep it up guys. Last one, finish off whichever one you're on. Well done. Okay, we're on to our lateral reaches. So we're trying to shift our weight onto one leg. These are our power reaches with a little bit of a hop in there. Okay, if can't hop, just reach, no problem. Remember they look like this, big reach and up. Stick your bum back to sit, back up. If you're in standing, squat and up. And if you wanna hop, Add a little hop, okay? All the weight goes onto one leg. Here we go, ready, set, and go. Find your version, but make sure it's challenging, right? Try the version that's a little bit harder and see if you can do it. You might surprise yourself, okay? Add a little hop, see if you can get a little bit of height. Even if you can't go that high, get a tiny bit of height on that leg. Try and just hover your bum off the seat to make it a little harder, right? Don't be afraid to challenge yourself. That's how we make strides, right? Good work, guys. Doing great. Hopefully now you're feeling a lot warmer than you were at the beginning. Things might be tired, but they should also be loosening up a little bit. That's it. Good work. Rest when you need to, but try if you see if you can get that full minute in. Okay, at whatever range you need to, at whatever level you need to, sorry. Okay, alternating through the levels. If you find that you can't keep at the top level the whole time, that's just fine. And rest, okay. We're onto our reciprocal patterning with our hand flicks. Remember, one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one. Mini flicks for them, okay? Opposite arm to leg. Ready, set, off we go. Reaching forward, one, two, three, Four, four, three, two, one. Big open hand. Two, three, four. Stretch out those fingers. You can see your hand. Use your eyes to help tell your body what you want to do. Right? If your hand's here, really think about using your brain to help push that hand open. Okay? Switching those feet every time. Same thing in standing. If you're doing it in standing, exactly the same thing. Okay? Okay? Big flicks with that hand. That's it, guys, doing great. I know those little dexterity ones are hard sometimes, but we gotta get those, oh, other way. <laughs> gotta get those hands working, right? Get those motor patterns firing. You got it. Big stretch through those fingers. You should actually feel those fingers start to get a little bit tired if you're doing this right. Okay, finish off whichever hand you're on. Flicks. 
Well done, okay? And you might feel a big difference one side to the other. That's very normal, especially with Parkinson's. Now, we're gonna go on to our um, sit to stand hops with our A to Z's. Now, we've already done animals moving from A to Z. We don't wanna repeat that because if we repeat that, now we've lost some of that cognitive challenge. So you have two options. Number one, you're gonna start off where you left off in the alphabet. So if you were at J, you're gonna start at J and go Jaguar, Kangaroo, et cetera, okay? The other option is if you want a different challenge, you can start counting backwards from 100 by three. Okay, so you stand up, you do a hop, 100. Okay, 97, you get the gist, okay? You don't wanna give too much away. <laughs> so it's up to you. Again, I'm gonna try and stay as quiet as possible so that you can really focus on that cognition. Remember that you are trying to keep your body moving as fast as possible. So you wanna try not to slow down. That's the challenge is that your brain has to keep up with your body, okay? Here we go, ready, set, off we go. One minute on the clock. Keep going guys, five seconds. Good job and rest. Hopefully your heart rate is up, your brain is working hard. Okay, very well done. So we are gonna do one little bonus exercise before we finish. We're gonna do some star hops. So I'm gonna show you what these look like in seated. What we're trying to do is get as small as we can and explode to be as big as we can, okay? So we're just gonna do 10 of them. You can do it at your own pace. I'll give you a minute to do it. I'm gonna show you in sit seated and show you in standing, okay? Little to big. So that means our toes are spread, our hands are spread. Everything is nice and wide. In standing, it looks like this. Down, big up. Now, if you want an extra, extra challenge, you can hop. So down, big hop, okay? So I'm gonna show you the seated version today. Do whichever one you want. We're gonna do 10 of them together. Here we go, one, count with me. Two, big stretch. Three, finish it off, come on. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Last two, nine, big jumps if you're in standing. 10, well done. Give yourself a big pat on the back. Very, very good job. If you would like to go through all these exercises again, feel free to do one or two more rounds of them. Okay, you've got the idea now, just restart the video and go again. Or if you remember them, just go through them on your own, okay? We're gonna do a little cool down together and then I'm gonna give you some links so that you can get in touch with us at the end, all right? Let's start with some big deep breathing. So we're gonna take a nice big deep breath up and exhale. And again, big deep inhale. And exhale. Two more like that. Big deep inhale. And exhale. And big deep inhale. And exhale. Good. Remember when we inhale, we're trying to expand the ribs, right? We don't want to lift the shoulders and use these muscles. We want to expand the ribs out to stretch out those little muscles in between the ribs. Okay? We're going to do those shoulder rolls again. So we're going to go up to our ears, back, and down. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. We're gonna put one foot out in front and we're gonna do some ankle rolls. You can do this seated, or if you're in standing, it looks like this. Okay, rolling those ankles. Ankle flexibility is so, so, so important for balance. If we don't have flexibility in our ankles, it's very hard to get stability over our feet. Okay, other side. 
in standing or in seated, wherever you're doing it is just fine. Roll those ankles around. Good work, guys. That's it. Very nice. Now, again, seated or standing. If you're standing, you're going to put your hand on your hip. If you're seated, you're going to put your hand on the chair. We're going to reach up to the sky. I want you to keep your sit bones, the bones underneath your bum, connected to the seat. Okay. Or if you're standing, your feet, both feet connected really strongly to the floor. I'm going to reach up and over until I feel a big stretch in my side body. And I'm going to take a big deep breath in. And I'm going to exhale and I'm going to go to the other side. Big reach up first and then over to the side. So we don't want to tip and lift our bum off the ground. Keep that bum nice and stable on the bench and over. Okay. In standing, you don't want to lean and lift that heel. You want to keep the heel down, reach over. Big inhale and exhale. Let's do one more time each side, bringing that heart rate down. And exhale. Last one. Reach up and over. Big inhale. Expand those ribs. And exhale. Good work. Okay, last thing we're going to do is stretch out those fingers. We know in Parkinson's they can get nice and stiff and tight, so we're going to interlace your fingers, reach them forward. Big, 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 big stretch out until you feel a stretch through the front of your fingers on both sides. Reach them forward. Chest is tall. We're going to shake out the hands and you're going to interlace the opposite pinky on top, which is going to feel very strange. Reach them forward and open. Good work. Big stretch. Elbows nice and straight. Very well done, guys. It has been a fabulous six weeks of working out with you. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, we would love to hear your feedback. So we love to hear what you think of the videos, what you want more of, what you want less of. Helps us plan for the future, okay? Um, you're going to see a link underneath me here to uh, two email addresses, one for me and one for the Parkinson Society. Feel free to contact either of us, okay? Um, we are happy to answer your questions, and we love, love, love hearing your feedback. So. Very well done over these six weeks. I hope you enjoyed our full workout series with warm up, exercise, and cool down for each session. Again, we would love to hear from you. It's been fabulous working out with you. Thanks for your time. Keep challenging yourself, please. That is all I ask of you. And we will see you all very soon.